Hey, welcome to Rewild Homeschool. I've been getting this question a lot lately, something along the lines of, I was having issues with my plant and I looked up the symptoms and it said I could be overwatering my plant or I could be underwatering my plant. And how the heck do I know when they sometimes present the right way? Well, luckily at Rewild, we are here to equip you with all the resources to best care for your own plants at home so that you can have an easy time and just get to enjoy and relax around your plants the way you should. We like to stray a little bit away from giving you the prescriptive approach to caring for your plants. We really encourage you to use your observation and play scientist to your plants. If your plant is showing any issues over the first week or so of you owning the plant, that could just be your plant adjusting to the changes in its environment. So one of the most common symptoms that we hear about that could maybe be overwatering and maybe be maybe be overwatering and maybe be underwatering, that's how we say that, is brown tips on leaves. I know it can be very confusing, but there's other signs you can look at. Go ahead and touch the leaves of your plant. I picked this very sad spider, and I can touch its leaves, and I can see that this plant is very droopy right now. Leaves are actually a more dull color than the, the lush green color that it was displaying when I first got it. And I can even go in and touch the soil and feel that the soil is dry. Now I do see brown leaves down here around the bottom of the plant due to the drooping leaves, due to me touching the soil and feeling that it's dry, is suffering from underwatering, definitely. Now maybe your leaves are looking full and upright and feeling quite firm and you're still getting brown leaves. That's typically a sign of overwatering. You might also see yellow leaves on your plants. So yellow leaves, brown leaves, firm leaves, and sticking your finger in the soil and feeling that it's moist, that is all an indication that you are probably dealing with an overwatered plant. So it just really helps to spend some time engaging with your senses with these plants, touching the leaves, touching the soil. So I brought up this uh, Dracaena marginata, Miss America. The Dracaena marginata and other fine leafed plants do tend to display brown tips on leaves fairly frequently, and it probably isn't overwatering or underwatering on your part. It has more to do with the lack of humidity in the air. And in this case, it might just happen as part of its natural life cycle. You can go ahead and just trim off those brown tips on the leaves. It will not harm the leaves of the plant. It will not mess with the growth of the plant. It's just that this plant is coming from a very humid environment in our space and before in the greenhouse and moving into your home it can certainly tolerate lower humidity but it might just show little brown tips on the leaves. You may also want to consider where the plant is in the space, right? So if you have your plant situated very close to a sunny window and you're seeing browning on the leaves, it is quite likely that your plant is experiencing a little bit of a leaf burn. It could be paired also with a little bit of underwatering because a plant that is receiving more sunlight is going to need a higher frequency of watering than plants that are placed further away from the light source, with some exceptions, of course. So spend some time looking at the environment of the plant. Is it near the sun? Is it near a radiator, perhaps? Something that could be drying out the air. Uh, something that could also be drying out the soil. And that is another reason why we really recommend sticking a finger in the soil, spending some time observing your plants on a daily basis, especially over the course of the first week or so that you own your plant. Now, this may be a little bit more difficult to notice with plants that are succulents or semi-succulents, like your Hoyas and your snake plants and that kind of thing. They do show signs of underwater, just maybe not in the same droopy leaf way. What they tend to do is they tend to deflate a little bit. So I have two succulents here. One is a fully watered succulent and one is a bit of an underwatered succulent. And what we'll notice about these plants is that this one is very full, 
When I go in and give the leaves a little squeeze, I can feel that they're firm and full. They have a lot of structure. It's upright. And with this succulent here, I'm noticing a slight pruning of the leaf, a slight deflation, almost like it's a balloon that the air is getting let out of, a grape that's becoming a raisin. This is actually the sign that I start to look for in succulents to know that it is time to water because I always err on the side of underwatering my succulents. It's much easier to kill a succulent by giving it too much water. Which brings me to an important point. You'll probably want to err on the side of underwatering your plants. Most houseplants do like to fall into a pattern of being slightly dry between waterings and then getting a good deep watering. Uh, that is, of course, if you have proper drainage and the water is allowed to flow freely out the bottom. Succulents are no exception. Succulents are desert plants, and many plants in here that are also semi-succulents, like our hoyas, like our snake plants, also hold the water up in the body of the plant and use it very gradually. Therefore, they don't need as persistent of watering. Typically, the process of a plant deteriorating due to a lack of water is a much more gradual process than that of overwatering. I know that when I water this sad spider plant, I'm gonna see it perk right back up in a matter of hours. The deterioration of a plant due to overwatering tends to happen quite rapidly over the course of several days. You might notice a strange smell coming from the soil. You might notice a fungus gnat issue starting to happen. You will notice more yellow leaves around the bottom of the plant, leaves falling off, maybe even some black leaf matter, stem matter, maybe brown and mushy. It's really gross. Therefore, it always just helps to slightly underwater your plants versus overwatering your plants. Oh my God, there's a little spider. Now you might be seeing this plant and thinking, oh dear, droopy leaves, this is probably underwatering and it's time to water this plant. However, upon further observation, what I'm seeing is yellow leaves, yellow stems, and when I go to investigate the issue deeper down, I have found the mush, the mushy, nasty, googly bits. I've gone ahead and touched it, it was a mistake. It's really nasty, but I know definitively that this is definitely a symptom of overwatering. Sorry, plant. If you do have an overwatered plant, which it happens to the best of us, you want to start by moving it to a place with just slightly better light. Don't shock it with drastically better light if you can help it. You want to let the situation dry out. If the soil is allowed to dry out, the bacteria can no longer thrive on the moisture and it will no longer be able to thrive on the plant matter in here either. It might be difficult for your plant to come back from an overwater situation, but it's not impossible. If you take those steps, you are likely to see some results. But we don't like this happening. Just err on the side of underwatering your plants. Feel the soil before you water. It should feel dry, at least in the top one or two inches and then give it a good deep watering and see what happens. It also really helps to observe a plant the day after you water it. Notice the change that your plant goes through. And these are the worst. Whenever you buy a plant from Rewild, you will always get detailed care instructions so you know exactly what to do with it when you take it home so you don't have anything to worry about and you just employ a little bit of powers of observation, especially in those first several weeks of owning your plant, observing its patterns, observing its conditions, and learning to tell the subtle nuances between overwatering and underwatering. We want your plants to inspire a sense of calm in your home, not stress. So whatever we can do to make that easier for you, we wanna do it. Thanks for watching. Check out our other videos and check out our blog over at Rewild Homeschool. It should have answers to all the problems you have. And if it doesn't, shoot us a comment. We'll make a video about whatever issue that you are having with your plants. That's an outro. Gosh. <laughs>